Good evening, it's good to be back again online. This, this, tonight I'm going to give a lecture as we've been given a series of lectures on the cross. And tonight I'm going to be speaking of the sayings of Jesus Christ upon the cross. But first, I want to give a little reading. My first reading is from Second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 10. It says, But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit of God the spirit who is from God so that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God and I'm going to read the first account of Jesus on the cross but I'm going to read it from the account of John now there are four different accounts of what Jesus said and we need to realize that the when Jesus spoke upon the cross there wasn't no order in the way that he spoke these things but tonight I'm going to give try my best to give you an order of what he what what he said and why he said them so I'm reading from John chapter 19 And I'm reading from verse 14. It says, Now it was the preparation day of the Passover, the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered and said, We have no king. Then he delivered him to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went out to the place called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha, where they crucified him. And two others were with him, one on either side, and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross and writing and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth King of the Jews then many of the Jews read this title for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city it was written in Hebrew Greek and Latin Therefore the chief priest said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews. But he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what have I written? What I have written, I have written. So the soldiers, when they crucified Jesus, took his garment and made four parts to each soldier apart and also the tunic now the tunic was without seam woven from top to bottom in one piece and they said therefore among themselves let us not tear it but cast lots for it whose it shall be that the scripture might be filled, fulfilled which says they divided my garments among them 
and for my clothes they cast lots. Therefore they did these things. Now they stood by the cross, Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, and wife and the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciples whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. From that hour the that disciple took her to be to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel of, full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled the, filled the sponge with sour wine and put it on a hyssop and put it into his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. We read the account of John, of Jesus' death upon that cross. And in that account, Jesus spoke three times. In total, Jesus spoke six times. He spoke once, go into the cross. And he spoke six times while he was on the cross. Now you could imagine that day on that day that Jesus beaten, whipped, humiliated, mocked. He in weakness bearing his own cross taken to that place the place of the skull and the bible says as he was on his way he met some women wailing and weeping now it was a custom by the Jewish council that they they would pay women to wail Jesus in his weakness looking at these women knowing that they were not weeping for him and knowing this that it was just a job for those women. They just wanted money. But he said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and your children. For indeed, the one coming in which they will... S indeed, the days are coming in which they will say, Blessed are the barren wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills cover us. Jesus is re referring here to the coming judgment upon Israel. And the judgment of the whole world, not only Israel. Jeremiah 25, 29 tells us, it says, Behold, I begin to bring calamity on the city, which is called by my name, that you should be utterly, and should you be utterly unpunished, you shall not be unpunished. For I will call for a sword on the inhabitants of the old earth, says the Lord. 
and his sword is the word of God it is only the word of God that is gone, going to judge them Revelation chapter 6 14 to 17 says this It says, Then the sky receded as a scroll when it was rolled up. Every mountain and island was moved from its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave, every free man, hid themselves in caves and in the rocks of mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, hide us. From the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand. On the way to the cross, Jesus, speaking prophetically, knowing the coming judgment, that was going to come upon Israel this is why he said to them weep not for me but for your children and yourselves now they put Jesus on the cross they nailed nails through his hands and through his feet and Jesus being lifted up on that cross and him looking down and seeing all the crowd all the people and he sees the soldiers casting lots for his garment and he says to them Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus, hanging on that cross, in all that pain, in all that distress, looks down upon the people and says, Father, forgive them this is the first thing that Jesus spoke on the cross when he was coming to the cross he passed judgment on them knowing that he was going to the cross that that judgment would be placed upon him Father, forgive them. What a merciful God. And all that Jesus went through, eh? He said, Father, forgive them. And it's only him that can forgive. And it was only him who was ever able to forgive them. Romans 5 verse 8 tells us, But God demonstrated his own love toward, toward us. Yet while we were sinners, Christ died for us. 
The Bible is clear. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And Jesus, he being the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth, it was for the very reason that he came. And through his forgiveness of those people, we receive the same forgiveness. The Bible tells us that it also says forgive and you will be forgiven. forgive Jesus was being placed upon that cross he was going to be killed probably the worst death that any man could have ever died by and he said forgive them for they know not what they do and he wants us to be the same. Forgive. And you will be forgiven. But you might say, I can't forgive. The Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Forgive. The second time that Jesus spoke... On the cross was this and I believe that I'm going in order where the four Gospels mingle it in different places he says woman behold thy son and saith to his disciple behold thy mother even in pain even in anguish he did not neglect his mother he looked down and he said to his disciple behold your mother in other words he provided a place of safety he provided a place for his mother to live Could you imagine blood dripping? The humiliation of being naked and his concern is providing a home for his mother. But he also provides a home for us I'm just going to read part of John 16 verse 7 he says nevertheless I tell you the truth it is to your advantage that I go away John 14, 1 to 4 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. You must realize the significance of these sayings. 
Jesus is showing us his love until the point of death. Not only is he, is he providing for his mother physically, he said, it's better that I go. He's preparing a place for us. Third saying. Now this is a big topic. Jesus said. I thirst. I thirst. Jesus thirsted on the cross that you and I shall never thirst. Just as he spoke to the woman at the well. And he said in John 4, verse 13 and 14, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain springing up into everlasting life. Ephesians 4.30 tells us, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit by which you are saved until the day of redemption. John 16 verse 7 I'm going to finish it off. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come. And if I depart, I will send him to you. Jesus there is talking of the Holy Spirit. And he said, it's better that I go. Better that I go. That I can send you the comforter. The Bible says that, that the comforter, when the comforter has come, that he will lead and guide us into all truth. But there was much more than that. The same Holy Spirit that comes upon us is within us and the, and the Holy Spirit seals us until the day of redemption. In other wise, guarantees us. We have a guarantee and that guarantee is the Holy Spirit that has sealed us. And when he comes again, we will have no need for the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says that he makes all things new. The old things are passed away. And all things have become new. We have resurrected bodies. And we will be like Christ. So today... We have a guarantee. But Jesus spoke of it of, of a different way. He said, I thirst. I thirst. And when Jesus, when they put that hyssop and that sponge into that sour wine and, and passed it up to him, he turned his head and didn't want it. He wasn't satisfied. But Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit satisfies us as believers.
And grieve not the Holy Spirit by, you, by which you are sealed until the day of redemption. There's more to my point. <sighs> missed one out, have I? I think I missed one. <laughs> right, good enough. Oh, I did. No, I didn't. Yeah, I did. But I know what it is. <laughs> it should have been the third point. It was the two thieves upon the cross. One reviled him. Mocked him. Said to him, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other thief said, do you not fear God? For we deserve what we got. Our punishment is just, but this man is innocent. And he said to Jesus, he said today, he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, today, you will be with me in paradise. That thief acknowledged his sin before God his wrongdoing he feared God and Jesus said to him today you will be with me in paradise now the Bible also tells us Jesus said he said where I am there you shall be also Today, we have a promise, and that promise is eternal life through Christ. If you are a born again believer, and you have repented of your sins, and you have called upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. Jesus said, For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whomever. Whomever. And when we pass from this life, whether we be in rapture or in death, where I am, there you will be also. And we will be with Christ. And Christ gives us that promise today. I want to go back to my uh, fifth point. <laughs> Pages stuck together. It says at the ninth hour. Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sakbathani. That is to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The word there, forsaken, means to abandon or to cast aside. And he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? The reason why God could not look upon him. Because he held the sins of, of the world upon his body. 
he was set forsaken by God cast aside that you and I would never be forsaken Hebrews 13 verse 5 tells us let your conduct be without covetousness be content with such things as you have for he himself said I will never leave you or forsake you these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ he says I will never leave you or forsake you I am with you until the end of the age the Bible tells us that no one comes to the Father but by me I am the way the truth and the life that's not me six point the sixth point Jesus said it is finished when Jesus said these final words it is finished everything that was needed for men and women to enter into that rest when he said it is finished he endured his race he endured his cross scripture was fulfilled this is why we are as believers that we are to operate from that place of rest from that finished work of Christ He says it is finished and the Bible says that he gave up the ghost six times Jesus spoke on the cross I'm going away from the notes six times Jesus spoke on the cross Genesis 1 God spoke six times And in the six times in Genesis that God spoke, five times, everything that was created was created for man. It was not created for God. It was created for man. When God said, let there be light, we needed light. When God said, let the vegetation and the animals come up on the earth, we needed food. In the same way Jesus Christ he spoke six times on the cross. Five times he was making provision. The first time was judgment when he was coming to the cross knowing that that judgment was going to be upon himself forgiveness came by the way of Christ on the cross when he said father forgive them for they know not what they do and this applies to us today not only to the Jews of that day Jesus says the same today father forgive them for they know not what they do many of us are blind and head into a lost eternity but Jesus Christ is still there saying father forgive them 
I will not cast away any that comes to me. Forgive them. He also gives us the promise of, of heaven. He also provides the place. He also gave us a guarantee. And he gave us a promise that he will never leave us or forsake us. Friends, the last time that God spoke in Genesis, he created man. He says that it was all finished and he saw that it was good. Everything that man ever needed was there in the Garden of Eden. In the same way, that same Eden lines up with what Jesus was saying at the cross. When he said, it is finished. I have done everything that is needed for a man or a woman to get to heaven. There is no other way. I have done it all. I paid the price for your sin. So I ask you today, are you blind? Or have your eyes been opened? I ask you to come to the cross just as that thief did and acknowledge that you're a sinner and fear the wrath of God because God doesn't send anyone to hell. You send yourself there. I ask you today, will you come? Will you come? Amen.